right, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops Mickey here. Listen, today I have got a awesome guest. As you guys know, this is my my main security guy right here, uh, Ben Reedus, and he is a, a security expert. And so today we're going to talk about stuff that I get questioned on all the time. And I thought, who better to answer this than you, my friend? Uh, so, Ben, welcome to the show, my man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me back, man. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, so we'll go into just the basics. Uh, this will be a short, you know, I'm thinking 30 minute uh, um, video, and uh, we'll we'll uh, break it kind of into two parts. So, so the first one, I really want to kind of get into just the basic home security stuff. There's so many people out there that that uh, uh, ask the question on a budget, like, what can I do from a budget perspective to improve the security around my house uh, to kind of uh, deter invaders, so to speak. Now we're not going into the hot and heavy stuff of, you know, somebody breaching and coming in and, and, you know, home invasion type of stuff. Uh, but just the basics and then, uh, you know, the do's and don'ts at the end there. So what are your thoughts, uh, just from a, a basic standpoint, what can somebody do on a, on a, on a budget to just improve the security around their house? Sure. Um, first of all, it's, it's gotta be, it's a mental, it's a mental thing that you have to understand. This is your castle um, and you want to protect it. Okay. So how do we do that? Um, criminals are always looking to get in quietly and quickly. All right. So noise and time is, is our biggest things that we're going for. You want to, you, if someone's going to come onto your property, come into your house, you want them to make a lot of noise and you want that, um, uh, that event to take them a lot of time to actually get into your house. Cause that's what they don't want. That's literally the opposite of what they're going for. They want to get in quick and quietly. Yeah. So you, you look, and we're going to more detail, the floodlights, if, if they're seen, well, that's going against their, you know, their desires there. So make it to where they're seen all your entries, uh, your front door, your back door is very well lit. Okay. Uh, the approach, to your front door and your back uh, back door can be well lit by a floodlight or a motion sensitive light. Uh, and then when they get to uh, an opening on the exterior of your house, it's got to take them some time. You want it to be, you want them to have to literally break the door down, which is, you know, lets all your neighbors know, Hey, something's going on over there yeah. um, before they get into your house. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of like the real rough, rough basics, basics, time and noise. That's going to. Okay. So, so you mentioned, you mentioned lighting. Is it better to have motion sensors uh, where they, it comes on and kind of uh, startles them? They don't expect it. Or is it better to just have them on, you know, so when it gets dark, lights come on, you leave them on until it gets light. Uh, sure. Um, I can argue for both. Uh, okay. Honestly, uh, having lighting all the time is good because I have my lights on all the time. But I also like to have a motion sensor in certain like avenues of approach. Basically, if yeah. someone's going to come between my car uh, in my in my driveway between my cars, I want that motion sensor to kick off and say, "Hey, I see something." Um, and like you said, it startles them. And it and again, like we were talking about the other day, you want to change their mind. That's yeah. the biggest thing that you. That's how you stop an attack or how you fight back. Or how you stop something like this? You want to change their mind that this is the wrong house, and that's that's the biggest thing that a floodlight or a motion sensitive floodlight will do for you. That it automatically alerts everywhere around. Oh my gosh, someone's over here, and now I can be seen. That's what you want them to think. Okay. Now, if you were just doing your standard walk around a house to give somebody, you know, hey, th these are the things, you know, let me go look at your house, recon it, and mm -hmm. tell you the entry points that you probably need to fix. Uh, for example, hey, you got hedges that that basically somebody can hide in and take their sweet time to entry into your house through a window. Um, what kind of things are you looking for when you walk around a house during the daytime that would um, uh, give an intruder more time, uh, you know, et cetera? Or can you walk sure. us through that? Yeah, sure. Um, so the the framework of the door is going to tell me a lot. Are the hinges on the inside or on the outside? What um what kind of door frame am I looking at? Now, don't get me wrong, that that can be expensive to enhance, right? You don't want to literally replace your door, but do you have a door that has a bunch of windows in it? Or do you have a solid door? Is it metal? Is it wood? Um, 
these are automatically the things that I'm looking at is how, how much time, how uh, much noise am I going to make getting into that house and the door frame, the door makeup, how many windows uh, tell me automatically a lot about that. Most of your back doors have windows in them, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, that's, that's a really good entry point for a criminal anyway. Um, but you mentioned the hedges around windows. Uh, that is, uh, we've talked about it before. That's uh, concealment. It's not cover, yeah. but it's concealment, right? So it's concealment from somebody seeing what they're trying to do. If you have hedges that cover a portion or you know a majority of your window, that's a problem. You should trim those hedges yeah. uh, where you can see the full window and anybody trying to get into that window can be seen you yeah. know, without a doubt. That's the first, the first few things that, that I automatically point out every single time. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things, and I know this is, uh, uh, I've had to drill this into my wife on, on multiple occasions, and that is the fact that, uh, you know, she used to leave her, her pistol in her, in her truck, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, and also garage door opener, right? And so I tell her, I'm like, if somebody breaks into that vehicle uh, and, and get, they get that pistol, and now, one, you've just armed them, but two, if they decide they want to come into your house, the garage door opener is in there. They're going to open the garage. And once they're in the garage, they can close that garage and they got all the time in the world. They can either wait for you to come out or they can just take the time to get in the house. Uh, what do you tell people? And I know you see that, uh, oh, yeah. you know, in terms of keeping people from doing that uh, and realizing that, you know, most people have in their garage a, a, a tools of every kind, hammers, uh, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exacto knives, whatever it may be, you've weaponized the criminal when they get into that garage. So what do you tell people to deter them from doing that or, or to how to kind of uh, navigate that? Sure. Uh, and I'll be honest, I'm just as guilty about that. Um, I'm, I'm always armed and my garage door opener is literally in my in my, in my vehicle. Yeah, uh, my wife, same way. Um, so once you've gotten to that point, it's. It's going to come down to what is inside your house that can help you. And first thing that comes to my mind is my dogs. Okay. Um, my dogs, if someone, if that did happen, my yeah. dogs being inside are going to let me know, Hey, something's going on. You yeah. Know, without doubt. I don't have to hear it. I could be asleep, but my dogs will absolutely hear that. Um, and if you, one of the first things, like I said, it, initially is it's got to be a mental game. This is my castle. You have to have a plan. A, to keep people out of your house. Yeah. But you also have to plan for what happens when people are in my house. Yeah. And I consider in my garage, that's in my house. Yes. That, yeah. That That's in my mind, you are inside my house. It's obviously a garage, but it's still within my, my castle. Right. So, um, and you, you nailed it. You have given the criminals every tool that they possibly need, all the opportunities right there inside your garage, without yeah. a doubt. So, uh, so you have to make a mental plan of, okay, what happens when they're in the garage? What do I do next? You know, uh, that's where the, the noise thing and the time thing that's gone. Cause they have all the time. You mentioned it all the time and all the tools they can make noise. Yeah. They're not worried about being seen inside the garage. Right. So they have to have a plan for what happens when they're in the garage. My biggest plan right now is my dogs without gotcha. a doubt. Yeah, let's yeah. talk dogs for a minute. Now, uh, I, I know you've got big dogs. I got little dogs. Uh, yeah. But does it matter? You know, um, in, yeah. inside dogs versus outside dogs. Uh, I typically don't like outside dogs because uh, they're they're typically held at one point, the backyard, right, or something. If it's mm -hmm. an inside dog, they got all you know your entire house, you know, to watch. Uh, yeah. What what are your what are your thoughts on on animals and dogs in general? Sure. Um... I don't like leaving animals outside. That's just like I said, I've yeah, said it before. <laughs> I like dogs more than I like people. Yeah, uh, me, I me too. will. Yeah, uh, I will say that an outside dog will a lot of times prevent people from coming into the like the backyard. Yeah. Okay. No one's gonna want to jump in a fenced yard with a with a dog. You know? Right. But uh, if you don't have that, which I'm not recommending that at all, um, the inside animals like I say they they protect you when you're asleep and it does not matter if it's a big dog or a small dog a small dog hears the same and yeah. and hey something's up outside and now i'm barking because i'm scared and that's yeah. just that's a 
hey, something's up. A big dog will say, hey, let me out so I can go get that. You know, yeah. I, I want to go get whatever is out there. Um, uh, we have big dogs and yeah, that's just, that's just my, my choice, but yeah, small probably, dog, dog. yeah. Would you say a dog's probably the number one thing you could do for home defense, uh, Absolutely. without having to do it's, it's inexpensive. You don't have to be trained on something. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, having a security alarm, um, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm just, I would rather have it. If I had to make a choice, I would have a dog over a security alarm without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. yeah there's, too. there's no, there's no comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we talk lighting, we talk dogs. Uh, mm -hmm. let me see the other, other bullet points that, uh, cameras, let's we'll talk security for a second, security cameras sure. and things around the house. What are your thoughts on them? They good, they bad. Uh, what are the do's, you know, what, what do you avoid with the security camera versus, you know, um, sure. go ahead. Um, yeah. Um, there's some really good ones out there now, uh, uh affordable, options okay uh that work off of wi-fi that work off of um uh, you know internet cable all that kind of stuff uh i like them now because i can i can look at it and i can see whenever i want i can look at my phone and look at what i want to see with these cameras yeah. uh and you and i have talked about this before uh they can be hacked uh if it's a wi-fi signal someone can hack it okay and that's that's pretty extreme but it's still a possibility that it's still a, it's still a concern for sure. Yeah. Like I said, I like them. I like having them, but you also have to understand the, the other side. Of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So like if you get, if your power goes out, that's one thing that one of the, the first things that I did for myself was actually to go to a hardwired security system, because uh, if the power goes down, I can run, I can still run the the DVR off of a, a backup camera or a, not a backup camera, a, um an APU, right? An auxiliary power unit that will keep that thing going and the feed going so that if something does happen, I've got it, you know, in HD around my house. Sure. So Wi-Fi, my big thing was the power goes out, the the Wi-Fi goes down, you lose signal, you can't see it. Sometimes it doesn't want to work for you. Like I've yeah. had times, well, with like a Nest doorbell where somebody ring a doorbell and I can't answer it, even though I can see them because my, my Wi-Fi connection is, is being interrupted or, or jammed up, you know? Yeah. So, okay. When, um, yeah, when they work, they're great. But if they don't work, and there's a, a lot of reasons why they wouldn't work, it's it's doesn't help you for sure. Yeah, for sure. Now I know uh, we've got some followers that are probably seeing you for the first time, and I failed to introduce you when we started and your qualifications. But I did yeah. mention that you are a security expert, and that goes to uh, a whole other uh, uh, level uh, because you are one. You're a former SWAT team member. And a, mm -hmm. a former army sniper. And so uh the SWAT team piece, you guys, if if there's anybody that knows how to to navigate around uh and house and not be seen or to be seen uh and get into a house quickly, it's you. And that's why I'm asking these questions to, to you because yeah. of your your background. So I, I failed to mention that and I apologize. Um okay. now let's talk uh do's and don'ts. I know we're we're about probably 12 minutes in. Uh this is probably gonna be uh uh, it could be a, a, a fast, a fast, uh, a burner for us here. We may get under 30, uh, but what are your yep. do's and don'ts? What are, what are the things that you go, you know, this is for sure. 100%. You know, if you can do it, do it. If you had money money wasn't the uh, limit. Um, what, what are your dues? Uh, and what are the things that you see every single day and you go, that's a stupid move. Don't do that. <laughs> sure. Um, so we can really get off in the weeds and a lot of this um uh patterns first of all let me let me talk about patterns don't don't have a pattern um and that's that's easy to say hard to actually you know put in the put in the play if you have a pattern where you you drive in you open your car door or your garage door park your car and you go straight from your car to inside of your house and then shut your garage door if if you do that every single time, someone can literally patternize you, and they they know as soon as that garage the inside garage door shuts, they can get inside your garage before you're going to shut that door. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, like I say, don't don't have a pattern. Easy to say, hard to hard to put into play. Um, what's another? Uh, and by dude? pattern, you're talking. You know, people leave at the exact same time every single day. You know, at at four o two. You see them come out. 
uh, you know, and in, into uh, they get in their car, they back up. And when they come home, they get out, they go down to the street, they get the trash cans, they, you know, they right. do all the different, but they do it in a, uh, every, we're, we're kind of, uh, we follow, that's kind of in our nature is to follow a routine. We all have a, a certain routine. You know, you, when you get out of bed, you first thing you do is get coffee or you go to the bathroom or whatever it may be. But that yeah. is, you're, you're saying mix up the routine yes. uh, so that you're not uh, an easy target. Okay. Gotcha. Sure. Uh, don't become a creature of habit, which as humans, we are absolutely yes. a creature of habit. But if someone's trying to, to do some type of ill will towards you, they're going to, they're going to pick out a pattern quick. Um, uh, let's talk about a uh, do. What's a, what's a good, a good do um, have a plan have a uh like i spoke about the other day if you have a plan of how to respond to a situation whatever the situation may be it doesn't have to be an exact scenario but have a plan that takes away that that moment of i can't believe this is happening what should i do what's what should i be doing to you know fix this or I don't know what to do right now. If you have a plan, it removes all of that, you know, and it doesn't have to be a perfect plan. It doesn't have to be the perfect answer for whatever scenario comes up. Any plan is better than no plan. And, yeah. and I've literally, literally taught that. Um, I think it was Benjamin Frank Franklin that said, uh, um, I'm going to, I'm going to mess it up, but it's uh, not preparing is preparing to fail. Yeah. I've, I want to yeah, look fail that up. the plan, plan to fail. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but have a plan. If, if I can say anything, it would be definitely have some type of plan, some type of response other than, oh my gosh, what should I do now? Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, um, one thing that I have noticed and, and uh, it's t- tell me if I'm wrong on this, but I've, I see in neighborhoods, you know, people, people put exterior lighting on their house. Right. And it basically just illuminates the outside of the house, makes it look grand and pretty. Right. Uh, yeah. But where I see them make mistakes is they'll put them over the wind, like uh, pointing on windows instead of on walls. Okay. And, uh, and and what that does is it basically if, if you're inside your house and you go to look out and it's shining on the window and it's nighttime, you're illuminating yourself and you're actually creating a blind spot where you're having a hard time to see anything yeah. that's out there. But they're going to see you in a heartbeat. The other thing, too, that I notice is people, uh, you know, in the old days, we used to leave a leave a light on in your house, so people thought, you know, they felt like somebody was home. Uh, they mm-hmm. then they got fancy and they put little timers on. But when you put on a, a light on the inside of your house, if your blinds are open, people can see movement inside the house from the outside, and they can tell very quickly where you are in the house or if you're not even home. Uh, anything on that? Is that? I mean, it's kind of an accurate kind of duh, right? I mean, sure. Uh, and people just overlook it. You know, they don't they don't think that it's an issue. Uh, yeah, my blinds, especially to the front of the house, are always, 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 always closed. Yeah. Uh, and I want to say if you turn the blinds up, if you have the adjustable kind, yeah. they can't. See the house, but if you turn the blinds to where they're facing down, you can actually see inside with the right lighting. Yeah. Um, it's one or the other. And I, I think it's up. The mine are always mine are always up for yeah. that reason. But um, the whole leaving the light on, that's, that's like you said, that's commonplace now. People, if you leave the exact same light on every single time, every, yeah. every day, that's a pattern. And yeah. someone watching that is going to know, I don't believe that anymore. You know, that's the yeah. same thing, same, same light, same time of day, every single time that's on a timer. You know, that, yeah. that doesn't tell me that somebody's home if it's, if it's a pattern, right? Um, now, the the shades i do like the natural light inside the house a lot of times but at night when so during the day natural light is fine but at night i turn them all close them all every single one of them just for that reason because people at night people can literally see inside the house yeah uh i cannot see outside because it's dark um yeah other other indicators that uh uh somebody you know, would do that, uh, would let uh, somebody know that basically nobody is home are things like leaving the mail, you know, by the front door packages by the front door that stay for a long period of time. Anything else that, uh, you know, like you said, patterns, cars that are sitting in the same spot for three weeks, right. Yeah. Lets your neighbors know, Hey, they're not home or that person's not going anywhere. And they're, 
they're dead. <laughs> you right. know? Yeah. So. Um, newspapers used to be a, a thing in back in uh, when I was an active police officer. If there was a stack of newspapers or, you know, the, the uh, ads that yeah. they would hand out every, every week or every couple of days, whatever, if there was a stack, you knew that person wasn't home. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. So like you say, packages, mail, any, anything that, that builds up or even sometimes trash in the yard, like anytime the trash in my yard, I'm going to go pick it up because I don't want, I don't want trash in my yard. Yeah. But if you can see where there's, there's a large collection or, um, it hasn't moved in a week or so. That's, that's an indicator, you know, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Now, what do you tell somebody? Uh, and we, we, we see this happen quite, a, quite frequently really where somebody will come to your door and ring a doorbell, your nest or whatever it may be. And then they'll stand back uh, and they're waiting, they're baiting for you to come out, right? They're trying to draw you out of the house to talk to you when they've got their buddies sitting out here. What do you tell folks when uh, somebody rings your doorbell, you don't know them, uh, you know, you got eight soliciting signs and they still ring it. What do, what do you tell somebody? I just tell them don't answer. Um, okay. I, I, that's, that's what I do. If I don't know you and I'm not expecting you, uh, I'm not going to answer without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Um, it could be, it could be something completely innocent, but, uh, we have the no solic no soliciting signs. So if yeah. you're up here and you're ignoring my signs and yeah, then, I don't Either care. You, you can't read or you don't care. Right. Yeah. Uh, or, or a little bit of both. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and so, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I do. I, I've seen some pretty sketchy people come up to my door and I've, and I've watched them. Uh, and I noticed too, that some of them will get very, very close to the door. Uh, I noticed that some of them will not uh, the ring camera that is there that they'll, they'll try to tilt their head yep. or the nest, whatever it may be, you know, so they're, you're not really looking at their face. You can't really see and make them out, you know, very, very clear signs why you wouldn't want to open that door. Uh, anything else that they do that, that I'm not key on, you know? Yeah. Um, the whole mask craze. Uh, if they come up to my, to my door wearing a mask, you know, for pandemic reasons, you're not, you're not, I'm not even going to give you the time of day. Right. You know, um, I definitely don't don't answer the door, but you know if it's a professional business, they'll leave a card sometimes. Yeah. Okay, and that's that's I'm okay with that. Leave a card when I know that you're gone. I'll open the door and I'll look for it. But if I'm not expecting you, I I don't answer don't answer the door without okay. a doubt. If, if it's something important or if it's a like a police officer, I can see that uniform, yeah. even a officer will leave a card saying hi i was here this is me uh can you please contact the police department and here's gotcha. the number yeah you know uh professional service a lawn we're gonna lawn mowing services all the time yeah. they'll leave a card i can respect that thank you you know right. and ring my bell you know my doorbell 10 times knock yes. on the door you can hear my dogs going crazy yeah so if i'm in here i'm gonna come to the door stop knocking on my door you know <laughs> Yeah, that's that's uh, that's my take on it. But yeah, but yeah I've actually. I, I, yeah, I was going to say, I've actually had somebody do that uh, just recently where I was uh, actually trying to record a show and uh, they ring my doorbell like six times. The dogs were going crazy and yeah. I've got three no soliciting signs and it wasn't it. You know, my house went on fire. It was uh, just a solicitor just kept ringing it and yep. standing out there and ringing it and standing out there and, uh, you know, probably trying to sell me windows or a new roof or whatever it may be. Um but uh, they, they can be persistent sometimes. Uh, and, and, you know, but the, the key I think is, is people that when you see somebody, you don't, just because they ring your door, don't, doesn't mean you have to answer it, you know, stay, stay in your recliner and watch your TV. And if they see you, who cares, you know, just ignore them, right. you know, that's what you got to do, but they, they will bait you to try and get you out and yes. then, uh, you know, point at something on your roof and tell you, you got, Hey, you got a, a gutter damaged over here or something, you know, something to draw you, uh, out there, uh, Absolutely. criminals are get, they're pretty clever in some cases. They, they can be pretty smart or they can do things that, that, uh, to throw you off your game to where you just, uh, you know, they'll put kids to the door, uh, and, you know, trying to sell you stuff and, and draw you out. And then once you're out, uh, or once you breach that door, they're going to force their way in. And I see a lot of, a lot of videos with that too. Um, you know, how do you do that? It, it, say somebody does get stupid and, and has a little slip of, uh, 
you know, uh, they're like, oh, I totally forgot. And I, I just cracked the door so I could talk to him through the door. Uh, you know, what do you do in that situation? Uh, sure. Uh, so you've you've basically given them access to your castle, right? That's, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Um, you try and get the door closed as soon as possible. OK, um, if you have dogs and they get inside the the house, turn the dogs loose because yeah. this is inside your castle. You know, that's uh, that's my plan. Uh, yeah. But ha having a plan. Um, try and keep them out as, as much as possible. OK. And if they get in, you should have a should have a plan um, if they get in and, and my dogs have not made them want to leave. If they're still they're fighting my dogs or or whatever, I, I have a few strategically placed. Um, uh, I defend. <laughs> I think, yes, thank yes. you. Uh, that will that will deter their their continuation of their plans without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. they're better yeah. in proximity to the front door. I got you. Yeah. And I, I will, uh, in our next video, we're going to talk uh, about home defense inside, right. And things, things yes. like that. So, um, sure. okay, good. Well, uh, I, dude, I think we've covered most of the main topics uh, yep. and, and hopefully we've, uh, you know, created some critical thinking for folks that, uh, that are kind of wondering, Hey, you know, how do I do this on a budget? How do I do just regular, um, mm -hmm. you know, from a, a, uh, a home security from the outside coming in uh aspect so uh sure. brother i appreciate your time today and uh, i look forward to this next video and i will make sure i give you a full introduction on that one so <laughs> no worries sounds good sounds good